In order to add a question to Peerwise, you need first of all to be looking at your questions. So let's click on View to get a list of your current questions, and then we can create a new question. Before you do this, it's a good idea to plan your question, maybe write it down beforehand, so you've got a good idea of exactly what you want to be asking. So let's write a question. Which researchers demonstrated that DNA is replicated using a semi conservative mechanism? And I have a lot of options here. Instead of just writing plain text, I can add pictures or upload pictures, add equations, embed videos, include web links, and many other things. But here's my question, it's quite a simple question. And then if I scroll down, I get boxes into which I can put uh, particular answers that a student can select from. So let's put in some some names, Watson and Crick, and then onto the next box, Hershey and Chase, into the next one, Measleson and Stahl, Franklin and Wilkins or finally Lineva and Burke. So here we have five different options and because we wrote the question and we've been paying attention in lectures we know that this particular correct answer is going to be Meselson and Star. So I can click that. If it I click the wrong box by mistake when I select an alternative, it will automatically deselect the other options. So we'll stay with Meselson and Stahl, who carried out that particular experiment. And in the explanation, we'll put Meselson and Stahl used different isotope labels to demonstrate that DNA is replicated via a semi-conservative mechanism. And it's always a good idea to proofread your text to make sure it reads correctly. I think that's mostly correct. And then we can select some topics under which we can put the particular questions. So what is a good idea here is to put the week there the lecture occurred. So we could for example have week two for this particular lecture because it occurs in week two. You may find this topic already exists in which case you can just select it from the tick boxes. We can select up to five topics. Once we're ready and we scroll down, we can either save what we've done as a draft. If we're not ready yet to let everybody else have a go at our question. Alternatively, if we think it's good to go, we can click on show me a preview and that will let us see exactly what we've done. We can read through our question again and hopefully not see any spelling mistakes. We can see the answers and this tells us that the answer that we expect to be correct is C and then we have an explanation and the keywords. If we need to correct it we can go back and make changes or we can save the question and then it becomes live for everybody to work on. So there we go and in our question list we can now see how many people have tried to answer it. Is it popular? Any requests for help on answering that question? 
how many comments, the number of comments, any ratings on difficulty and its overall rating for quality by your peers. You can also view all the comments on your question. If you go to a particular question and look at it, you then get the option, if you decide, oh my goodness, that was wrong, that was really not a good question, you get the option to edit it or to delete it. This will reset all the parameters on the question and the old version of the question will not be available for other people to look at. You could just improve the explanation, which will just edit the explanation. Click back to go back to your question list or main menu to go to the top level for this particular course where you can see questions you've answered and questions that other people have written that you have yet to attempt.